When you're playing fantasy football, the biggest advantage you can have in the game is a true three-down workhorse running back that dominates for you. We break down our top 10 guys in today's episode. Make sure you subscribe, like this video, leave us some comments on the guys that we snubbed, and enjoy. Captain's Log 2259.55 I have traveled far and wide across the universe. I have been to countless galaxies and met fascinating beings of all kinds. And yet, nothing gets me jacked up like preparing for my fantasy football draft. When it comes to preparing for competition of such importance, I leave nothing to chance. The ultimate draft kit from the fantasy footballers is the only tool you need to prevail. Trust me, I teleport to alien planets on the reg and there is nothing better. Tiered rankings, video profiles, custom scoring support, and even a super sick mobile app. Set your destination for a fantasy football championship and engage to ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. With your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the podcast. Ah! <laughs> it's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Yes. <laughs> All my worst nightmares came yep. true immediately. Yeah. Immediately. Mm. All the talk before the show was maybe the lungs are back. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe I've got the ability to do the intro. You took a special lozenge? I thought I, I, I thought I even did some like dry runs where like sound it. came out. It was perfectly fine. But clearly during the <laughs> intro, there's a, like an octave that I hit that has been deleted. So Foot Clan, know that I'm not <laughs> That was great. I'm not trying to change the intro. I but you're just you're just, just not back to hundred percent yet. The next time will be more terrifying. Oh yeah! I mean, tomorrow's show. Who knows what's going to come out? And the the greatest part is, as the intro so I have music, to try every day now. Absolutely, as the intro music was going, Mike slacking, do it, <laughs> do it. <laughs> and if you ever you wondered, got me a little hyped. If you ever wonder, do we uh, do we like, edit the podcast? Edit the podcast when we make mistakes? <laughs> no, we drive the bus right over one another. The only situation where the podcast gets edited over the last what? Well, this is show one thousand two hundred sixty two. Is when Jason has to poop. Ah, hey, Mike has to poop sometimes and stop the show. I've been okay. Known. It's when either of these two guys has to poop. <laughs> Thank you. I've never had a poop stop. Brooks, have you ever had a poop stop? No poop stop. No. Al, Al back in the building. No poop stop. No, I've run out before in the middle of a show. Oh yeah, because you can do that. If we're talking about this, Brooks takes a potty break like every third show. Yeah. Be All right like, back. Guys. You mean oh, before beer. it begins? No, I mean like during the show. We always get the BRB. Got a pee pee. I don't know if it's every third show. Yeah, every second. I think this man, I think he controls his bowels a little (laughs) bit better than that. Uh, Well, that's an introduction to an episode. Tuesday, August 9th, the Fantasy Footballers running back rankings on today's show. We have an interview with great friend of the show, Austin Eckler, running back for the Chargers. Uh, One of the, the players in the NFL that really appreciates and understands fantasy football's value, what it means to the game, unlike... Bill Belichick, <laughs> who you know, I mm, he, I don't want to I don't want to like get actually mad at. Look, I I understand players don't need to pay attention to it during their like they have a job to do. Yeah, it's to go play football, win games. Doesn't yes. matter the stats, go win the game. I respect that. That's how you should play. But I do take a small issue with any vitriol towards what is actually making your game grow. Yeah. So it, it, you may not care about it, but you should be able to appreciate how it's made the game grow because it, it grows the fan base. You know, my uh, almost 11-year-old son knows every player from every, every other team. He buys Justin Herbert shirts and Patrick Mahomes shirts. And, you know, it's just um, 
it amplifies the game, and Austin understands that. So the thing, though, for Belichick is this isn't the first time that he has like made disparaging comments, not just about fantasy, but like he's kind of said the same thing about using analytics and the the Patriots are using analytics and he call like he like, you know, disguises the name of, of like social media is like, he doesn't know what's going on. He knows exactly what is going on. So uh, those comments coming from him, I take this direction. I call him with a, take him with a grain of salt there. Top 10 running back rankings on the show. Some news to talk about. UltimateDraftKit.com. Get in there now. Right now. Go check it out. The UDK Plus with the Draft Analyzer. We will break down your team. Strengths, weaknesses. What you can do to improve. Mm -hmm. Which fantasy footballer most uh, connects with your team. Ooh. Hope it's me. Compared to our rankings, which are updating all the time in the Ultimate Draft Kit. Uh, a couple of other quick announcements. We will be choosing the Listener League uh, winners very soon. No more submissions. Uh, it's over. But 1,000-plus incredible submissions. Thank you yes. so much for the time, effort. Jason is nodding his I, head because I, he, he feels the same way I do. Yeah, I mean, uh, when you get over 1,000 entries, you know, these aren't just like uh, go to listenerleague.com and click I want in. These are people that are – did something to try to uh, to get into the league, and a thousand of you out there sending them in, uh, just thank you. Appreciate it. It's, uh, it's humbling. And we do have a, a free yes. Discord server, which you can. we have a community event tonight on the Discord server, some football trivia, and uh, you can check that out. That's going to be 6.30 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 Eastern. And uh, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, click the Discord icon in the upper right corner, or go to discord.gg slash fantasyfootballers. It's going to be fun. Is Papa Josh running that? Papa Josh is running that. Okay. And it's, uh, like I said, the channel is free. So it's a great place to go. I think talk you can win people. a free jersey, too. You tonight. can. Yeah. Okay. All right. Way to be uh, informed there, Al. Just want the people to know what's at stake here. Do you, know what, do you know what jersey we're giving away? Or to oh, keep that, a, keep that a mystery? Please don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just want the people to be informed. NFL professional offensive player of some sort? It's a kicker. Oh, no. Don't say that. We would never do that. Well, I mean, if it was Justin Tucker. Yeah, he, he's in a different category, he right? He is. Yes, he is. With the, with his new contract. Like, just – who? I hate fantasy football kickers. Mm -hmm. Me too. But – Justin Tucker's the man. Yeah. Like, the, the dude is elite. That guy is winning football games. It's about demeanor, though. Like, Justin Tucker. He's yours. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? He's like, it's like a, he's a big guy in a little body, but he, you know what I mean? He just thinks he's. Well, and it's just his swag levels. That's what I mean. Off the chart. Helps when you can, when you're the best of all time. Yes. <laughs> all right. Let's jump into the news. News and notes from around the league. J.K. Dobbins has been activated off the PUP. Okay. We also got news, and I love the news. Uh, well, I, I don't love the news, right, but the yes. way it's worded, Ravens running back Gus Edwards is, quote, probably doubtful for week one, which, <laughs> yeah. frankly, I think that works in reverse, right? Doubtful, oh, to, be, it... doubtful to be probable oh, as well, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. The thing about the word doubtful is probability is already included <laughs> In the definition of doubtful, so so probably being doubtful is weird. But this is this is really important news. It's still the, early, month away. It is early, but what happened a couple months ago was when we thought that the um, after the NFL draft, when the Ravens didn't do anything to address the position. I know they drafted Tyler Beatty, but the, he was literally their eleventh player pick. The, they did not go hard after running back. You assume that the timeline, based on what the ACL injuries that were reported and the timeline of when they happened last year, you thought both backs would be healthy, ready to go for training camp. So when we heard that J.K. Dobbins wasn't, we started worrying, well, was it not a simple ACL? Turns out it wasn't. It was more complicated. There were ligaments involved. And, uh, you know, now he's looking good, but Gus Edwards is well behind that. And they got injured the same week, so I'm starting to wonder if the if it's not just a straightforward ACL injury and the depth chart is, you know, I, I, I drafted a lot of Gus Edwards in underdog a couple months ago, and whoops. Yeah. 
this news I hadn't seen till this morning, so we're still chasing details. But Darren Waller has remained out of practice and has not practiced since July 30th. Uh, we've got preseason week one a few days away. He obviously did not play in the Hall of Fame game. Um, only missed three practices so far, but uh, head coach Josh McDaniels, no details given on the absence. So just something to be mindful of. I wouldn't overreact yet. Yeah, and uh, I'm, not, I'm <clears throat> certainly not saying that he is not dealing with an injury, but wasn't? didn't we get reports a little bit ago that he's trying to get a new contract uh, as well, the, the Walrus? So I don't know. That, maybe that's affecting things as well as, you know, if, if only I had – a bigger bag of money, my my injury may heal up faster. Jamie Winston's going to miss a few days. Won't play in the preseason opener due to a foot injury. Right now, the report is just he, they're going to use caution with him, and it's nothing to be seriously concerned about. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, this is big news, Jason. Mm. Why don't you break this news because it broke your heart? The right tackle, strong man Becton for the Jets. Uh, he is expected to miss significant time after suffering a knee injury. He will have surgery, could miss the whole year. Uh, the Jets' offensive line was ranked 13th by Pro Football Focus, which is not bad for where they have been the last couple of years uh, going in. And so, you know, I'm a big Brees Hall believer. Um, and I. Brees Lightning. Oh, go Brees Lightning. <laughs> I love Brees Lightning, and I think he is great. Um, I know they have depth at right tackle, so this shouldn't completely annihilate them, but there was hope with Becton moving to right tackle um, that they that, that would become a position of strength, and he is now gone. And I do know that the Jets have a very difficult opening schedule. Yes, and by opening, I mean like the first two and a half months. I was going to say the first nine games are like a gauntlet for yeah. the Jets, which doesn't really seem fair. Yeah, that's kind of – you but, know, kick people while they're down part of that is being in a division that's got uh, three very difficult opponents already also you know just got to let you know baker mayfield has the inside track on the team starting okay job, starting Fing job. fingers oh. crossed but matt ja rule said the team won't name a starting quarterback till later yeah oh thank goodness yeah don't keep, you, you don't want your starting quarterback right. to practice with all of his time. Well, you, and you can't rush these things. No, keep no, the no, team no. guessing. You want that locker room to be yeah. kind of ambiguous. You don't let your opponent know your next move or your or your own team. Uh, any other news, Brooksy? No, sir. Nothing new. You guys want to talk some running backs? Let's go. Running backs. All right, we just got done with a couple of wide receiver rankings episodes. If you are curious where our consensus wide receiver rankings are at, we got through the top 20. You can also see them on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Today is all about the running backs. Our top 10 in half point per reception. No surprises at the top. Jonathan Taylor, Mike and Jason both have them at number one. I've got them at number two behind CMC. I probably shouldn't. If I'm honest, no. <laughs> you know, when you, when you go out and we, we put every stat projection into the UDK and into these player rankings and we go through and we project every carry for the team and every pass and, and every number and that kind of, you know, we also have a risk rating in there, which talks about the risk of injury and the risk of, a, a, of, of that prediction coming true. And look, Jonathan Taylor, there's no comparison between the Jonathan Taylor and Christian McCaffrey risk rating. Taylor and McCaffrey, even if there was no injury history between them at all, Taylor would be a much lower risk simply due to being considerably younger than Christian McCaffrey. And being the Hulk. And being, yeah, I've seen some some pictures of him this offseason. I thought maybe they were an announcement to move him to linebacker. I mean, he is built. And so I say all that to say seasons go right. I think McCaffrey ends up ahead of Jonathan Taylor. But Jonathan Taylor is much safer. And finishes the RB1 last year, 1,800 yards on the ground, 18 touchdowns, 40 receptions. When the team noticed what we know about Carson Wentz, when they recognized the inaccuracy that is now manifesting in Washington camp, they made a conscious effort to put the ball in Jonathan Taylor's hands over the back half of the year, and he dominated. Mm -hmm. He was unstoppable. Um, he had 11 RB1 performances in a row, which is better than Christian McCaffrey's 2019 season, which he was the number one running back, had nine straight. 
was better than Gurley's 2018 season. Todd Gurley was on fire that year, won a lot of people championships. Um, I don't know what there is to say about Jonathan Taylor other than he is a lock for the number one or number two spot in every draft and is going to deliver. Yeah, I mean, he's he's young. Uh, he's proven. He is behind a good offensive line. He has a quarterback upgrade, which can work in both directions, but I think it's a net neutral in the sense that uh, Matt Ryan might pass the ball a little bit more to Jonathan Taylor on checkdowns. That's great. The offense could score more. That's great. Although the 89 red zone rushing attempts, the most of all time, part of that probably came because it was like, well, we've got Jonathan Taylor. And we got Carson Wentz, so let's give the ball to Jonathan Taylor. Now they might throw the ball a little bit more, have more success um, throwing the ball in the red zone. So I, there's there's nothing really negative to say to Jonathan Taylor. The one thing I would say, because a lot of our listeners, everything we do here, all the leagues we plan, the Megla Bowl League that's coming, um, our, our stats by default are half PPR, which is just the right format to play in. But a lot of people play in full PPR. If that's your league, all three of us have Christian McCaffrey as the consensus 101. Yeah, it, just to like you know get some analysis here on Jonathan Taylor of like there there is a world where there is massive touchdown regression for Jonathan Taylor. Like that'd be pretty normal like, for an eighteen touchdown year, right? Well, and just saying like he had twenty nine carries in in the it, at the five or closer, which is outrageous. Like that, he led the league last year. Number two was James Conner, but those twenty nine attempts only turned into twelve touchdowns. Uh, so like maybe that number goes up but like just the natural the, the natural way that football goes when you put up a massive outlier stat like this that can come down but I also you're mentioning PPR Jason with Matt Ryan I think there is a world where Jonathan Taylor shocks us with how many passes that he actually catches uh, because you like look at you know this it's a different player but same team you have Naeem Hines right 57 targets this year with uh, with Carson Wentz, 77 when it was Phillip Rivers. Matt Ryan is far more like uh, Phillip Rivers than he is like Carson Wentz. So I just there is a there is a chance that the the targets go up for him. All right, the uh, number two running back for us, Christian McCaffrey. No oh, man, it's been a bumpy road the last two years dealing with injury. When he's played, even in the midst of those. Uh, absences 10 total games the past two years that's not a lot but seven top five finishes in those games that's as many as Dalvin Cook had and he wasn't hurt um, right now I like what I'm hearing out of camp about Christian McCaffrey not just headlines of you know I, we all know he's good that's mm -hmm. not what I'm looking at I'm looking at the way they're treating him at camp they're not letting him go three straight days of practice they're giving him off days to recover um, when he's out there, they're pushing him hard. They're talking about attacking with Christian McCaffrey, and he feels great. But I think they're trying to do some things in the preseason to just give him the opportunity to be available, which is, availability for Christian McCaffrey is production. Yeah, I mean, that's that's all there is. Christian McCaffrey has never been bad on the football field. Uh, if, if he is available, if he's playing football, he's going to be fantastic. The offense, I think, gets an upgrade with – Baker Mayfield, if he wins the job, um, <laughs> Christian McCaffrey is someone I, I've I've said this on you know if if you watch his video uh, in the Ultimate Draft Kit, his you know breakdown of him as a player, he should be the one on one unless you're just scared of the risk and and I and I get that um, you know he, he's he's one of only three players last year in the games that he you know wasn't injured in to score on average over 20 fantasy points a game in half PPR. It was Jonathan Taylor and Derrick Henry and Christian McCaffrey. He's as good as it gets. He's game script proof. There's no situation down, up. There's no situation where he is not incredibly important to the offense, and he's so talented. And, and you're right, the train what they've been doing in training camp, and I don't know if you've seen some of the videos recently, but it just reminds you, like, Man, he's just got another level. He's got another gear to him. The way that he catches the ball is perfection. It's smooth. It's effortless, thoughtless. And um, so, I, you know, if you want to take Christian McCaffrey, one, I, honestly, if I'm at the 101 spot now, I know he is in half PPR my, my second-ranked player. I find myself more often taking Christian McCaffrey just because the upside is that he can catch 100 balls and be a great running back, and, and no one else has that. Last year, Christian McCaffrey had a number one overall running back finish on the week. 
and a number five overall finish on the week without a touchdown. Like, that's how ridiculous his usage is, especially in the passing game, that he can score 20-plus points on any week without scoring a touchdown. And there's not a lot of running backs that can do that. I mean, essentially none. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say there's one. Yeah. Uh, Austin Eckler comes in at number three in our consensus rankings. He's 27 years old. I'm at three. Mike at three. Jason at four. Finishes the RB4 last year. Look, it was a, it was a great season. I mean, for Austin Eckler – uh, we had him on the show last year, and we had wondered if he would get all the red zone opportunities. He managed to score 20 times in the red zone alone. Um, he had over 300 opportunities. This was his biggest jump up in opportunities. And, you know, the question marks are, do they try to take away some of that workload? And that's something we talked to him about yep. on the interview later on the show today. But Eckler sitting here, do you have – like, is this the time when you get to this pick where you're afraid to make the selection because you've seen it for one year? Yeah, I, I am afraid to make the selection. Um, ironically, I started a, a best ball league last night after talking to Austin Eckler. I was at the sixth spot. He was there. I felt compelled to take him. So I did. Um, uh, you know, I love his upside. We saw he was the running back two last year, if you didn't remember. You know, he was that good. Uh, but the touchdown regression is almost Yeah, sorry guaranteed. about that. I said he was RB4, but that's where we that's where his ADP is. He was the two. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, he was the he was the second running back last year cuz he amazingly despite being a smaller framed guy and getting a massive amount of workload and being on the injury report pretty often, he only missed one game. This is a dude that wants to be out there, wants to be great for fantasy um and does whatever it takes. I love everything about a pass-catching running back. That's always the type that I want on a great offense with a great quarterback who doesn't have phenomenal competition around him. And even though they drafted Isaiah Spiller, I still think all of those things apply to Austin Eckler. The only issue I have is that he's not he's not getting 20 touchdowns. I, I think double digit is fine. You know, 10 touchdowns is a great year. But if you take away 10 touchdowns from him. Massive difference. That is enormous. That's going to, you know, and, and, and the touchdown uh, regression to the mean for Dalvin Cook on the other side is like, you know, he only had six. I think if both of these guys get 12, all of a sudden you're probably talking about Dalvin Cook ahead of Austin Eckler next year. Maybe. That's kind of my worry. You had like back in 2019 when when Eckler had, you know, the the really big breakout season, he finishes the running back 6 on the year and he did that with only 240 opportunities. He had he had 300 opportunities this year. So the guy is just he is efficient. That was It's a lot like Kamara. Yeah, I mean that was the season where he started off as the guy and then Melvin Gordon came back and he had to split, but he just he is so good and so efficient in the passing game that it makes up for lack of touchdowns in that year when he was the running back six he had he only had 11 touchdowns on the year so I and I know the where you finish fluctuates where with where the other running backs did in that particular year as well but my point being he doesn't have to score 20 touchdowns to still pay off at at the running back 380p because if if you draft him at the three and he finishes top five or top six I mean, you're you're still going to be pretty happy with that pick. Yeah, I mean, you really – I don't want people to overstate the Isaiah Spiller threat. I think that's the thing we need to understand is he is a rookie. There are a lot of things that contributing as a rookie entails mentally in terms of yep. being able to do pass protection or, or or contribute. You know, you might be thrown into, like, special teams. And so – And he, he fell in the draft. He's a fourth-round rookie. It wasn't like they – you know, they had opportunities to draft him higher if they wanted him. They, he, he fell a little bit, so – And Justin Jackson's gone. Like, Justin Jackson was the most talented of the, of the of other the backups, options. Yeah. You know, Josh Kelly and Larry Roundtree are not going to threaten Austin Eckler. So stay tuned for our interview with uh, Awesome Excellent yes. at the end of today's show. Quick break. Back with Derek Henry. Derek Henry. The man. Yeti. Oh, man. Let's get into it. He's at four in our rankings, five for Mike and I, three for Jason. Let me ask a, a provocative question Ooh. before we begin. All right. Was Derek Henry a good pick? last year <laughs> um you i think you have to uh, that's that is i like it i like what you did because i feel like you have to say yes absolutely i mean you're talking about a player who if you picked him well put it this way i know that in um 
three of you know the four main leagues that I consider my my main leagues I play in, the champion winner had Derrick Henry on their roster. Now, obviously, they didn't. He did not help them in the championship, but he sure as heck helped them get to the playoffs. And who was who was the one that didn't? Uh, was it you, Andy? Yeah, oh. yeah. I finished. Oh. I finished second though. Yeah, and had Derrick Henry to start the year. He was so good that you couldn't have gotten off to a bad start with Derrick Henry. Uh, you know, we just talked about how good uh, Christian McCaffrey was. He was twenty point one half PPR points a game uh, in in the in the full healthy games. If you take out his injured games, Jonathan Taylor even better twenty point eight fantasy points. Here you had Derrick Henry at twenty three fantasy points per game, and that is including uh, his last you know injury plagued game. He was a man among boys. He was so much better than everyone in football, not named Cooper Cup, a true difference maker, and I am so terrified to draft him yeah. right now. I, he's my running back three, statistically speaking, and I constantly pass him unless I'm at the, you know, he gets to pick eight, pick nine, where I feel comfortable because he's 28 years old, coming off of a foot injury, and I know he did rest it, a good amount of time before coming back on that foot injury, which lowers the probability of a re-injury to only 10%, which is a great number, and he was already back plus an offseason. So he should be fully healthy, ready to go, and you don't bet against Derrick Henry. That's something I've learned over the last several years, but I am terrified. Is that dumb of me? Is that is that just being too risk-averse to worry about the age well, of injury? Look, Mike, I'll ask you. If you bet against Derrick Henry last year, did you win or lose? You, <laughs> I mean, it's because it's, it's I think you question. could take a victory lap if you bet against him last year. I mean, the whole argument yeah. preseason was eventually you break down. He broke down. Yeah. And that's never happened before. Coming off of back to back season. So in 2019, over 300 attempts, 2020, 378 attempts this past year in eight games, 219 attempts. That's insanity. Like, and I I know he's the Yeti, but eventually human beings just, just your body. Even Yetis. Even, even Yetis, uh, you know, mythological creatures. Right. Even they start to break down. And seeing these running backs get that level of work of just over and over and over. And, and, and not just like, you know, catching a bunch of passes where he can take glancing blows. It's just it's you probably, so much punishment on his body. You should probably draft him. I mean, look, I, I, and I get it. I, I, <laughs> I am, I'm locked in with Jason that yes, i you should probably be drafting Derrick Henry. I admittedly am a coward when it comes to Derrick Henry, but when I'm in that, that ADP slot of, well, here we go. I'm lined up to get Henry. I go, eh, I'll take, uh, Justin Jefferson or Cooper cup or Jamar chase. And I, I just move on. What about the other running backs? Um, you know, I, I brought up Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook, uh, you know, one of the problems with Derrick Henry is that he doesn't catch I have the Dalvin ball ranked higher. Uh, as much. And so, uh, you know, where, whereas Dalvin Cook catches the ball, Austin Eckler obviously catches the ball a lot more. But are you taking those running backs over Derrick Henry because of the age and foot? I mean, are, just in your draft, are you drafting Derrick Henry over those other two guys? What were the two? Cook Austin and who? Eckler and Dalvin Cook. <sighs> It's really difficult. <laughs> it's difficult because you look at the situation and you say, I, I have the potential to have the number one overall running back. Yeah. Like that that's part of the equation for Derrick Henry. Like I don't think Eckler can be the number one overall running back. That's fair. I don't know if Dalvin Cook can be the number one overall running back. And so if that's something that like you're shooting for the moon there, like Derrick Henry, part of what I'm thinking about with him is will the Titans continue to be competitive without AJ Brown? Now, their win total is at 9.5, so that says, yes, they'll be competitive. Can they execute this offense? Do you have trust in the coaching staff? Yes, they've always been successful. So then the question is, is when he's on the field, is he great? Well, all those other pieces say yes. So if I'm playing the injury game, I don't think it's much of a different gamble than Christian McCaffrey. I don't think it's any different in terms of just saying, when he plays, he's probably going to be a top three running back. So I like giving my opponent that stick of dynamite, throwing it in their lap and sure. saying y you sit there and they're worried that it's going to blow up on them because Derrick Henry just wins you a week. Yeah, he, he does. The, the difference to me with McCaffrey and uh, 
in Derrick Henry, there are third the injuries. Like been hearing that McCaffrey is doing some very different things to get his body ready, some some different training. Uh, you know, and we've heard those things before about different players. You know, but like a big man with a foot problem terrifies me. And because uh, like once your once your feet start to break down and you're just you're too large for your your feet, it you don't recover. <laughs> too large for your feet. Um, no, I mean it's not going to last forever. And eventually you'll you'll enter a end of career Marshawn type of uh, analysis where Marshawn wasn't going top five, top ten, but he was still contributing. Right. Like I think Henry will contribute, but yeah, I mean elite play. What he was doing. 16 touchdowns, 17 touchdowns. Last year was on pace for 20 touchdowns. So. <sighs> don't, if, look, if you don't want to be too large for your feet, as Mike said. That, Mike, the look, fantasy doctor. If, you, if you're scared, go to church. If you're not, draft Derrick Henry. I mean, I don't even know what our summation for that analysis really was. The I'm scared of his is, feet, man. The, is that Derrick Henry is awesome and was the best running back in football if you are – not afraid of his age and specific foot injury, then you should draft him. If you are scared of it, then go to church, I believe, is, uh, was our uh, analysis. <laughs> the one thing I will add is that, you know, he was, you know, he, he was getting targeted last yeah, he year. Was, yes. On pace for 40 receptions or something? Yeah, about that. So, given the fact that A.J. Brown is gone yep. and vacated targets often go to the running back, you could see Derrick Henry used still a little bit more in the passing game, never to be a full pass catching back. But that would be nice for, you know, having him be a little bit more game script proof. Dalvin Cook is 27 years old, comes in at number five on our consensus running back rankings. Mike and Jason, four and five. I have him at seven. Uh, I don't even know if I realized that. Mm. Um, that would probably mean I have Alvin Kamara a spot ahead of Dalvin Cook, which shocks me. But the stats do what the stats do. Uh, Dalvin Cook, maybe it's a little bitterness. Maybe it's because I needed like six points from him to win a yeah. championship in yeah. the final game of the year, and he couldn't give me six because what did I have? Kellen Mond? Yes, <laughs> Mond. Yeah. Kellen Mond. Mond. Yeah, he, I was sh shaken, <laughs> not stirred. Oh. Uh, despite playing in only 13 games, fifth most carries for Dalvin Cook, second most 15-yard runs. He came back. He wore the device. He went absolutely insane on Pittsburgh. Um, that was a delight. But scoring two points in Week 17, not a delight. Over the last three years, despite missing two games, two games, four games, only Zeke has had more opportunities. So here's here's kind of what you can bank on, which is ironic with the whole conversation about McCaffrey and, and, and Henry. Look, Dalvin's going to miss games. He's going to miss a game or two. He just – something happens, and he goes down in a heap, and normally the injury's not as bad as you think it is, but then he misses a game or two. Um, like, he is one of those players where – I don't know if you want to take Madison with the last pick of your draft or the yeah. second to last pick, at least, you know, you will have a starter for the two, three, four games he misses. Yeah. I mean, the thing with Dalvin cook is that he, he always gets a little bit banged up and misses a couple games, but he plays the majority of them. And, and that's pretty much what you can bank on for most running backs. His talent is exceptional. I think the offense of the Minnesota Vikings is one that I've tried to get a lot of pieces of. I think uh, Christian Kirk is going to be better. I think uh, that who who are you saying? <laughs> Captain Kirk. Um Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins, thank you. <laughs> uh is is going to be better the passing game. I think Dalvin Cook will be more involved in the passing game. He is still a stud running back. We forget solely because of touchdowns. Dalvin Cook was the second running back drafted last year. It was like, oh, Christian McCaffrey and then Dalvin Cook. Because he's been great forever. He's been a top five running back so many times, and here you you have him as a guy that, I mean, he just had six touchdowns last year. If you look at his touchdown rate, you know, over the last couple of years, you're talking about a huge swing where he averaged a rushing touchdown every 19.4 carries the two seasons prior. And then last year, he touched averaged a touchdown every 41 and a half carries. So positive regression to for a player that we already know can score touchdowns in a good offense I I I really liked Dalvin Cook. It was year. it was madness with carries inside the five for Dalvin. He had 15 carries inside the five, very solid number. Three touchdowns. So compare that to Eckler, who had 16 carries inside the five, and that was nine touchdowns. Damian Harris, 15 carries, just like Dalvin, eight touchdowns. Like that's 
that's more the range that you should expect. And they just just some some bad touchdown luck there for Dalvin Cook. So I I think he bounces back and is an elite running back again. Yeah, he, he's a tier lower for me due to the fact he will guaranteed miss games because it's five consecutive years that he's missed yeah. significant work, and it's it it feels a little different with Dalvin because it's pretty consistent. Kevin O'Connell coming in, I I like that. Kirk Cousins has the occasional off game, which hurts the entire offense. Um, but there's a lot to look forward to. You're getting a potential top five running back in Dalvin Cook, um, and that's where he's being drafted at number five. Alvin Kamara. Mm -hmm. I don't Super. Know I, do I have the drop? Of course. Kamario. Maybe my, my cohorts in the back have the drop. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, Alvin Kamara. <laughs> Is he still Super. Finishes the RB8 last year. Okay. Being drafted as the RB10 this year. So by rankings, we think he's super compared to everybody else. Average the most touches of his career was the least efficient he had ever been last year. He's always been a high-efficiency guy. I mean, in his career, he's averaged five yards a carry, and that's including this last year where he was down at 3.7 yards per carry. Now, some of that you can't – blame him they had a lot of offensive line injuries they had a lot of quarterback injuries and, and just um, volume yeah the more volume you get the harder it is to be uh super efficient with it uh, but you could also say okay he's getting older they lost Taron Armstead on the offensive line uh, is Jameis Winston really the the salve you know to to make him spectacular basically is he is he losing a step or not uh that's that's the question I think and obviously, he's not going to be the same without Drew Brees. Yeah, that's the bigger question to me is just what is Alvin with Winston? We haven't seen much of it. His entire career of excellence was under Drew Brees, and then last year they went through different quarterbacks. And so um, there's some risk. The suspension, not likely to happen this year, but it's still looming in some capacity. And then you don't know what the flow of this offense will be. For the first time in a while, you have some pass-catching options outside of Kamara with Chris Olave and Michael Thomas's return and Jarvis. Yeah, and so we I think we have some concerns that Kamara's passing, you know, pass catching volume will match what it had been in previous years, which really was the the crux of his value where he was doing the Eckler thing, 200 carries, um 80 receptions. That was just kind of like you print that up for Alvin Kamara every year. And so I think there's a little bit of suspicion in the fantasy world of whether that will happen again. I mean, he was still – he pulled in 67 targets, and he missed four games. And no Sean Payton. And so he, he was on pace for 87 targets had he played a full season. And that includes that weird mystery game where he – You said 87 targets? Uh, yeah, that was his pace. That was his full season pace. Yeah, yeah that, which, that would bum me out. It, I get it. It's That's not the Camara that we're used to with Drew Brees, but that's still – th that's still a, a, a very legit target share. 87 is a very legit target share, not – great for what he's done historically but then you add Michael Thomas Jarvis Landry and Chris Olave I, oh yeah Landry's looking great in camp so it's like oh, he's not he's not going to be the 80 reception guy again that's just I don't I don't think that's realistic to to stat him down for that I, I agree I agree because what what didn't he hit like 81 receptions three straight years like receptions not targets yes yeah he started his career 81 81 81 83 yeah, I mean, I think I think a season that might be more in line, you know, it's the touchdowns. It, what's going to happen there? He's had those years where he's had 14, 16. He's had a year when he's had four um, right in the middle of it, even with Drew Brees, and then four last uh, – or sorry, five, and then four last year. So a little bit more questions. I mean, all these guys, again, we're talking about the top ten running backs. They're the top. Yep. They're the best. Yep. I, you want them. You want them all. Yeah, I, I'm still in on Kamara, the – I want that target share. I want uh, looking at the depth chart. Like Mark Ingram is the backup for Alvin Kamara, and like Ingram's fine. Okay, fine. He he can play the role as a backup, but we've seen him now for uh, multiple years. Of he he doesn't have the juice to compete with Alvin Kamara at this point, and there's no one else on that roster that can. I mean, Dwayne Washington. Malcolm Brown, Tony James Jones Brooks Jr., whatever we call him on this podcast. Like, it's Alvin Kamara. He's going to be the guy, and he probably will be a little bit more efficient on the ground like he was last year. 
but he's going to get a massive amount of volume. Yeah, and even though we've got him at the six, don't draft him there because he does carry. Uh, we expect as of this time that the suspension that will come for him will be next year, but that's not a guarantee. Uh, that 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 could change the legal proceedings uh, two months from now. Uh, could continue on as they are currently scheduled, and then he has a midseason suspension. So there is risk. Let him drop to the third round, draft him there, get a value. Joe Mixon comes in at seven. Uh, pretty polarizing player to rank right now. I'm at four. Mike has him at twelve. I really want to ask Mike some questions about that comparison, uh, comparing him to Alvin Kamara because, look, we know the Bengals' offense is going to be outstanding. You love yeah. that for a running back. You want them to be in the red zone. You want them to be scoring. And he finished as the running back three last year. So that was a proven commodity uh, at the running back position from weeks six through 12, 23-plus fantasy points in five of six weeks, third most carries, fifth most red zone touches, fourth most touchdowns, and, and much a coach, like a coach who doesn't mind inefficiently running the ball, you know, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. I mean, he had 292 carries last year, which is wonderful. Um, I think that Mixon is polarizing in part because we've hoped for this for years. And then last year you got it, but you got it later than when you drafted him, right? You started the year, you bought in, you got some a great week one, mm -hmm. then mediocrity for four weeks. And then he really got it going in a consistent fashion over the back half of the year and was an elite option for your fantasy team. Um, so why why the disparity between Mixon and Kamara? Is it proven commodity from the past? Is it the pass catching volume, Mike? If for Kamara specifically, it would be yeah those things. That just, I I know that Kamara is the guy, and I know that he's going to see you know over sixty targets for sure. And with Joe Mixon, like they, so he's the guy. Yeah, he's the guy. And, but, and honestly, I've, I talked about this on a recent show of is it just comes down to me liking other running backs a little bit more. I'd, and Joe Mixon at 12 does, it does feel very low, but when you're doing your rankings and your projections, there's always, always players. You're like, that guy's too low. And there's just, I, I can't artificially bump him up. So you're saying you don't actively dislike Joe no, Mixon. No, no, no. You just no. actively like other players more. Now, that is correct. To both of you, can Joe Mixon finish in the top three this year? No, I don't think yeah. so. I think, obviously, he finished as the running back three last year. But so had some absences, McCaffrey. Yeah, no, McCaffrey, no Henry. No Henry. No Henry. Um, so, uh, b barring other people above him getting injured and him being healthy at the same time, I don't think that's in the cards. And the reason is because of the pass-catching work. He's not, as a running back, he's not Derrick Henry. He's not even Nick Chubb, this incredibly efficient superstar running back who's just you just can't stop him and then in the passing game he is more involved than a Derrick Henry or a and he's capable but they don't use him that way he is not a game script proof back and that's my worry with him that's why you saw a lot of a stretch run of good games and some games where it was bad in the Super Bowl there's Samaj P Ryan out there because the way they give him rest is in passing situations in the two-minute drill they don't use him as the guy, and that's stupid, but that's the truth. And so that's my issue with Joe Mixon. I really like him. I've got him as my running back seven. I think their offensive line is improved. Their offense is great, and he's the dude, but he's not the full-time dude. He is the guy that they want to give breathers in passing work, and passing work is where fantasy points come quicker. Their offensive line uh, ended 2021, ranked 20th. It begins 2022, ranked 8th. Nice. In the NFL, which is nice. They made upgrades at guard and tackle. Uh, Najee Harris comes in number eight. Uh, his consensus ranking uh, by the three of us puts him uh, two spots behind ADP. I got him at 12, Jason at six, Mike at nine. He finished at RB4. Probably the player we get the most hate about disliking. I think it's what Mike said. I don't think any of us dislike no. Najee Harris. It's It's – liking the potential upside of other running backs slightly more than Najee Harris because last year, look, it was a bit of a, I mean, he was everything. He had 307 carries on the ground. He had 74 receptions. And that's not to t that doesn't take away from Najee Harris. That's a, a point for what he's capable of doing. But it was also a byproduct of a noodle-armed retiring Big Ben. And you have question marks now. Mitchell Trubisky. Is it him? Is it a rookie over the second half of the year? So it's an expectation, I think, for those numbers to come down a little bit. 
Yeah, I mean, but for him to still be a top ten running back. Yeah, the the bet on Najee is is one. I, I think he's a very very talented running back. I love the player. The volume will be there. Over four hundred opportunities, and uh, perhaps it comes down a little bit in the target department. But Mike Tomlin rolls with one running back. That's just that's how he does things. That's how he coaches. That's how he's done it for years and years and years, and it's it's not going to be any different moving forward. So the volume is safe. It's just, you know, in this range, because these are the best players, we're asking ourselves the question, can Najee finish again, like, or, or this year, could he be a top three guy? Can he finish in the in the top five? And it's, it's hard to see him getting over that threshold, not by a ton a, a, at all. I think he's still fine. If, if he ends up as your running back one, I think that's fine. He's going to be a good foundational fantasy football running back because of the volume. But that ceiling, I just don't have it there compared to the other guys. Second lowest yards per carry ever among rookie running backs with 1,200-plus rushing yards. It really was yeah. a volume runner yep. last year. Not a lot of big plays on the ground. Now, huge in the passing game. But, um, you know, he's he's awesome. He's a great running back, and he's he's built. Look, there are only a few guys that are built to handle a workload. Najee's built to handle it. He didn't miss time, right? I mean, he missed zero games last year. Yeah, he's he's awesome. I, I think he's yep. a great player. Um, he could catch the ball. He's built for the workload. <laughs> yeah, right there. I get a little choked up talking about Najee. He's, I get uh, it. He's a beautiful man. He's got a great smile. Um, the thing with Najee for me is where I love him the most is in the passing game. Uh, that's where he uh, excelled last year, and his targets are going to come down. He had 94 targets last year with Big Ben snapping the ball, getting rid of it as soon as possible. Deontay, Najee, the checkdowns, I, 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 he's still going to be involved. They'll have 70 targets. But if you lose 20 targets, you come down it's a little a bit. Deal. You don't view the Steelers' offense as one that's going to have the same scoring opportunities as the Bengals. That being said, if we put Najee and Joe Mixon right next to each other, you, you can make arguments for either one. Honestly, I would prefer Najee. That's how I have it ranked because he is more game script proof. Uh, you look at the consistency of him, he might not go out there and have the number one overall fantasy finish getting a three-touchdown monster performance while their offense just decimates another team. But he didn't have quite that many games where he disappeared because if they're down, he's getting checkdowns. If they're up, he's getting the ball. He's just He is one of the very few full-time backs. He's just not on an offense with an offensive line that we are in love with right that now. That you trust as much. James Conner at number nine. I have him at 11, Jason at 12, Mike at 7. He finished at RB5 last year. I'm going to be transparent with you. I don't think he's going to be in my top 12 by the time the season starts. Okay. I am starting to um, question his ability to repeat what he did last year. I'm starting to believe that the team trusts Eno Benjamin more than we think they do. And you're talking about a season that had 18 touchdowns on the ground for an older James Conner that I think that variable – because of how inefficient he was as a runner, um, it throws into question whether I think he can get back to that mark, that that RB5 mark. I love the offense. We've made the argument for him. But I understand why he's being drafted at RB16 in the third round. It doesn't – like at, there was a time this offseason where I was like, that's outlandish, that's ridiculous, that's absolutely insane. But he does possess injury risk. Sure. And I think part of managing that injury risk, Arizona is going to use a couple of other guys more often than we want them to. Now, not around the goal line. Like, he's going to have opportunities to score a lot of touchdowns. But um, I guess I don't want to overemphasize the departure of Chase Edmonds, and I don't want to underemphasize these other backs that may do a little bit of what you just talked about with Joe Mixon. I think some of that's going to happen in Arizona with Eno Benjamin on third down. Eno can be the the P. Ryan, the Chris Evans from Cincinnati, but I'll leave you two to discuss uh, Connor. I say those things are they certainly could happen. Uh, what we what we what we have to go off though is last year when Chase Edmonds went out and James Connor's usage went you know through the roof. We're talking from you know fourteen opportunities a game to over twenty two opportunities a game. Just that's the sensational workload for fantasy. Eno was the was that guy you had a, a like a month stretch here from weeks 10 to 14 where or 10 through week 13 where Chase Edmonds was not involved and Eno Benjamin's getting 
seven opportunities a game. Like he's last year, they really didn't use him. Maybe they trust him more. Felt like more of a break glass emergency. Yeah, it, Edmonds injury thing. But yeah, it may, maybe maybe Eno has finally stepped up. The, the like the, the basically the only thing you can say for Eno is as a seventh round pick, he has managed to stay on the team. And, well, yeah, like, they added Daryl Williams too. Yeah, but I'm saying like. Most seventh rounders, it's difficult to stay on a team for multiple years, and Eno has done that, so maybe they like him even more. But like James Conner, where he was awesome, was as a pass catcher. And these first six games for Arizona, you don't have the number one pass catching option with DeAndre Hopkins, who is suspended for PEDs. Like Connor is Connor is great at that comparatively to the rest of the running backs on his team. I know Daryl Williams volumed his way there last year with the Kansas City Chiefs, but I, just, in my opinion, Connor is a much better option there. And then when they get to the goal line, Cliff Kingsbury's favorite play in the entire world is to run the ball up the middle. Rodney Hudson, their center, coming back, flirted with retirement, but he is coming back. He's not what he used to be, but he's still a he's still good enough, clearly, to get it done. Where you had 15 rushing touchdowns for James Connor, and the volume may come down. But James Conner, to me, is very high probability to repeat double-digit touchdowns when you combine rushing and, and receiving. So I high risk, very, very high risk player. I totally admit that, but I, I think at the end of the year, he's still a top 10 guy. Yeah, with, with the Eno Benjamin stuff, I was looking for the quote. I couldn't find it. I read it. It was about a month ago. One of the other Arizona Cardinals players was talking about how Eno Benjamin is finally out of the doghouse this year. And I found that so interesting that it was like, oh, so he, this is a player admitting that this guy was in the doghouse last year. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury said it, it's like a completely different player coming in this season. He's been criticized for his work ethic, his film study, all of that stuff. And apparently whatever he's done this offseason, he's come ready to play. And the buzz has been real around here. The the local guys, yeah. um, you know, yeah, he's we're, a lock for the backup. We're for we're from Arizona. And it does seem like it's Eno's job. I think that he will play most of the Chase Edmond role, but not as much. So he, so James Conner, to me, will be what James Conner was with Chase Edmonds plus a little bit this coming season. And to illustrate that, if you just take out the first two weeks where James Conner wasn't really the, the guy at all yet, the rest of the season he was the running back five. So that is a huge chunk. That is plenty of games with Chase Edmonds, and I think he could – you know, I think he could repeat that because he is involved in the passing game. He is the clear goal line guy. He's on a high powered offense, but he's got a good injury risk. So he's he's risky. Thankfully, he's dropping to the third round. One stat that uh, is worth mentioning, not just for Connor, but anybody in this category, but he had a league leading 15 red zone touchdowns. And uh, over the last decade, 43 different running backs that had double digit red zone rushing touchdowns. Only five of those 43 repeated that number the next year. It's very difficult to do. Yep. Aaron Jones comes in at number 10, one of my favorite picks in the draft uh, right now. I think the opportunity to get a value on Aaron Jones is very high. He's a late second-round pick. Packers need pass catchers, and Aaron Jones is a proven commodity in that department. You're going to get, you know, to me, I'd rather take Aaron Jones, no looming suspension, same amount of opportunities, more trustworthy quarterback. Give me Aaron Jones at his draft cost over Alvin Kamara. That's that's my take. Sure. I think he's just a very, very good, efficient runner. He's going to share time with A.J. Dillon, but they're going to share time together on the field as well. Yeah, I mean, you look at the games that Devontae Adams has missed. You you watch the target volume go up for Aaron Jones, who's probably the best offensive piece on this team outside of Aaron Rodgers. He is someone that is reliable for fantasy, reliable for the offense. He's been a top-12 running back the last three years. Um, even with missing a couple games, his target total should go up. I know that he's probably going to seed a few more goal line opportunities and a and a few more carries to Aaron Jones or to AJ to, Dillon. To Dillon. But Aaron Jones to me is uh, one of my favorite picks. I mean, right now he's at the two hundred eight. When when you're getting a player like this who's been a top twelve running back three years in a row, who's the center piece of a great offense who catches the ball. Uh, you know, he, and he's he, you know he's still young enough to where I don't think he's lost anything. I, I I love the Aaron Jones pick. I don't see much wrong with it, other than he isn't. I mean, the reason he's being drafted where he's being drafted is because he's not a guy that's going to touch the ball three hundred and twenty five plus times. 
The top 10 running backs, Jonathan Taylor, Christian McCaffrey, Austin Eckler, Derek Henry, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Joe Mixon, Najee Harris, James Conner, and Aaron Jones. We will be talking more running backs on tomorrow's show. Out of those 10, who are you most worried about busting? Most worried about is Derrick Henry because of the cost. Like, J James Conner may be more likely, but I get right. him in the third. I'm having to take uh, Derrick Henry oh, up top, and that one scares me. <laughs> Any of these guys that you would look to trade in a dynasty league with the window closing right now? Oh, yes. You, you, when you have older running backs, you should. it's very difficult emotionally, but you should always be willing to trade. Like Aaron Jones, he's almost 28. Seems like his contract is great, except the team could get out of it pretty easily after this year if they, they want to and they don't want to carry that cap. Uh, yeah, most of these guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> like Derrick Henry. Dalvin Cook. I mean, like the, Christian McCaffrey. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean. Try to try to get a haul where you get a younger stud running back and other assets. But yet, none of those younger stud running backs are in the top ten. Right, you well, go get DeAndre, the, Johnny, DeAndre Johnny. Swift plus there something, you go. And, and I think you'll be happy in a dynasty. Well, yeah, potential omission here in the top ten. DeAndre Swift, we'll talk about him soon. Uh, but first... We need to talk to great friend of the show, one of our um, consistent guests, yeah, and uh, fantasy football lover, Austin Eckler. You talk in a May. All right, the fantasy footballers are privileged to welcome back. Yeah, baby. Not good friend of the show, great friend of the show. Three time. Austin Eckler. How you doing, buddy? Yo, what's good, fellas? Good to be back, man, for the three-peat. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, man, we had you on last year. You are talking about how much you appreciate the fantasy community, how much you were paying attention to it. You had the privilege of doing the uh, Eckler's Edge show on Yahoo last year. You were even further entrenched into the fantasy community. Um, as we kick this off, just tell me what your experience was diving in deeper last year. Um, wow. Um, I guess I can see it starting to play out every time I'm out. I think it's like a 10 to one people come up to me and say I was on their fantasy team other than people that are like, Hey, I'm a big Chargers fan type of thing. So uh, I see it. I see it playing out and I see the appreciation of my appreciation of fantasy football starting to play out into the community, which was my goal from the start. So the, tw 20 touchdowns didn't have any, yeah. <laughs> anything to do with that either, right? Yeah, you know, that always helps. Yeah, if I'm on, not only I'm on your team, but I'm I'm trying to carry that thing as well. So yeah, nice. that definitely helps. <laughs> yeah, it was uh it was great. We had you on last year. Um we you know, you were almost a my guy. We we've, we've got our my guy episode coming up here in a couple of weeks and you were almost a my guy, but I asked you a question. And I said, "When are you going to talk to the coaches about goal line work, getting used in that red zone?" And you said, and I quote, <laughs> You know, the, 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 it's the coaches, there's players and there's coaches. Sometimes they want to put in a missile just to go through the pile. And so I did not make you a my guy, Austin. And then you go out and you score 20 red zone touchdowns. You ruin, I mean, so, oh, man. so how you can I trust, us. how can I trust anything you say now? You're right, man. You're right. That's, that's what's great about fantasy, man. It's, sometimes it's a roll of the dice, you know, you got to stick with your, your guys and, and, you know, hope for the best. So speaking of the incredible year, which congratulations, uh, like you dominated on the field and, you know, for our fake football teams as well. Like, how is that running back room shaking up? We know you got uh, uh, what, what looked like it, it, a real uh, draft day steal with Isaiah Spiller there in the fourth round. He was a guy, I don't know how, if you get into draft Twitter or not, it's a crazy place, but they loved Isaiah Spiller and they were super stoked to see him drop to the Chargers. And uh, just how how is he coming along? What's that what's that tandem looking like so far? Yeah, man. You know he's he's a young player. Um, not just because he's a rookie, but he's also twenty years old. Um, I think he was the youngest player in the draft, and so I, I can I can see that just the maturity as far as just how he's going to have to learn. And it, it happens with every rookie, right, coming in and having to basically catch up to everyone else like myself that's been doing this for five years. I'm um, talking the mental part really right now. Um, so there's always that barrier as you're coming into the league and trying to learn. And so it kind of slows you down a little bit on the field because you're thinking a little bit more than, than you would like to be, which uh, is definitely going to impair your play. So right now it's still early. I haven't seen anything live yet, but as far as right now, he's been really receptive to the information, asking good questions. And so that's where I want to see him start. 
I, I don't know his impact on special teams yet, which I know that'll be uh, a big part of his role as a rookie, um, especially coming in. So uh, there's still a lot to play out, but I still think that, you know, he's in the right spot as far as learning, understanding. Now it's just a matter of fact, seeing in these preseason games, if he can actually apply it to a real game situation. You've, you've got a lot of continuity on the team coming from last year. You've added some great pieces, but for the most part, you know, the, the offense is intact. What, what's different this year in training camp so far that you've, you've you know, is, the, is there anything, if the feel or uh, kind of the, the goals of the team, is there anything that has felt different this year or is it just more like we're back at it again um, or big changes? Uh, I mean, we're definitely back at it again, but um, there's something to build on. You know, you say that continuity, we have something to build on with a lot of the same pieces coming back. Um, and I think the most important part of that is the Joe uh, Lombardi and Justin Herbert, um, you know, piece, you know, them two being together for the second year, you know, Justin's only going into his third year. So him as a quarterback, you know, from my experience, I was with Phillip for three years, who'd been there for 17 years, who's calling plays, changing protections, doing all this stuff. He's running the show to a guy that's just starting to figure it out and trying to be able to be into that chief role. So I, I know where he can get to and I know where he's at right now. And so him having another year and having to grow on that is going to make us a better team. So I would say that's the biggest, uh, the biggest change from last year to this year is one year together and especially the growth of the quarterback spot that we've been seeing. Um, and we know how special he is. And now we have the pieces that are were around him yet last year that are back. And so uh, we're also going to be making plays and now he's going to be even smarter with his game as he continues to get better. So, we're, yeah, I feel like our offense is just going to be better because we're going to be more consistent. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see it out there. You've got two great wide receivers on the team, obviously. I mean, a, a, a bunch of them. But Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, unbelievable. I want to know you as a fantasy player, the way that you play. Obviously, Mike Williams has been uh, a huge, monstrous games. Keenan Allen, the more consistent. If you were picking the way that you play in a half PPR league, which one are you taking first? Keenan for sure. Oh, all right, okay, <laughs> all right. for sure. This man's gonna get a hundred catches. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and you got uh, Joshua Palmer. Yeah, year, year two, a lot of yeah. buzz. Uh, Jalen Guyton, those guys. Yeah. Um, more weapons for Justin Herbert in this yeah, offense. Man. Josh has looked really good, man, in camp. Um, you know, it's just one of those those situations where we do have Mike and Keenan that are the main guys. But um, like, man, if Josh is you know continuing to rise. I, I can see him, you know, getting a spot somewhere on a roster as a number one sometime. Like he's really turning it on. And there's a lot of firepower in the division overall. So you're probably going to have some big time games needing some, a lot of points on the board with oh, yeah. the quarterbacks and the wideouts in that division. Oh, yeah. uh, talk about, talk about your new uh, tight end, Gerald Everett arriving on the roster. Yeah. G we call him G Gerald Everett coming okay. in. Yeah. He's uh he's, I love him, man. Cause he, he likes to talk. He likes, and it's not like <laughs> trash talk or anything like that, but, he just loves to like get to know people, just talk, talk to you like in the locker room. He's a good locker room guy. Um, and so that's what I look forward to new guys just coming in in general. Like, hey, are you going to be a good teammate? Um, and so him coming in and just being a guy that he was the one who introduced himself to me coming in, talking, hey, respect the game. Love it. Like, I love that. All right, we can build off of that. Um, he's not, you know, just to himself, like thinks he's everything. Um, so I, I like that part of it. And then actually on the game, we actually had our first scrimmage yesterday and he was making some plays yesterday. So I'd love to see that. I'd love to see how elusive he is for, for being a tight end, you know, tight end. I feel like, um, aren't really the most athletic, more so technical. And, uh, you know, Gerald has definitely got some elusiveness to him. So uh, I like to see that. And just, it's another weapon for Justin too. Um, Justin was throwing the ball a few times yesterday. He was making plays. So like, man, if we can continue that and he continues to catch those balls, like, I mean, you have, to, you have to guard everyone on the field um, because everyone has play making ability. So it's looking yeah. good so far. That's awesome. Yeah, the uh, the weapons. There are there are many. Yeah, many, many. There are many weapons. I, I want to circle back to you. This is a fantasy show. Biggest workload of your career last year. Delivered for everybody. You know, over 200 carries, 70 receptions. Uh, is that your wheelhouse? Is that where you want to be? I mean, I know that I guess most running backs are going to say, hey, give me the ball every single play. But when it comes to keeping your body fresh and staying healthy and all of those components, is that what you're aiming for this year? Or do you think the staff is going to try to take a little bit of that away? I think it's my job. It's kind of both. It's kind of both. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I think it's my job to make myself as valuable as possible on the field, right? That's the efficiency, you know, making all the plays, do it all. 
people that. And that is my mindset. Like, I, I want to be that person. And so if I'm able to do that and I get to a certain level where it's like, man, we want to have Austin on the field all the time, I could see my load continue to be really high. You know, if they're like, oh, like we feel like, okay, there's might be a drop off, right? Or we don't feel like it's as consistent when Austin's not in the game, right? That's my job to make that situation. I'm trying to be the best on the damn team on the NFL. And so at the same time, I also understand that I want to continue to play for a few more years. So I also want the guys right. in the room to step up, to step up. So that's like, man, we want to get Joshua Kelly some reps because he's doing his thing too. And we like what he brings to the table. Um, so as a, from a personal individual standpoint, I basically am trying to be the best that I can that makes Austin like, hey, we want him on the field the entire time. But as a team aspect, I want the other guys in the room to step up. So they're like, hey, we want to see these guys take some some drives here and there, too, because they are good as well. You know? Yeah. No, that makes sense. I You have to answer one question for me uh, as, as an elite running back in the NFL. Fantasy players, we watch the game. We see someone uh, break off a big run and then they get the fantasy football players. Oh. Their worst nightmare. They get the, the one play where they get the blow they get the break and somebody else comes in for the next play the question i have for you austin it's very simple do you need that break or not <laughs> look man but we're out there and you have a big run where you made a guy miss and you're exerting 100 percent of your energy for more than like six seconds you definitely need a break all right oh uh, you do you do unfortunately like and, the, and our team, <laughs> our, we're different too. We might rip off a big run or pass and we'll get up to the ball and run one right away because we're trying to take advantage of that there and say go. we're in better shape than you. So there we're you go. all going to be tired after that. So I love you know, that's what we did a lot last year. But We've yeah, seen the shirtless pictures. Yeah. We know. We, we know you're <laughs> very in shape. Yeah, all right. <laughs> that, that leads me into Maybe the out. next guy I want to talk about. I want to talk about Coach Staley. Does he, yeah. does he know or like, is he aware of like he is becoming a folklore hero among fantasy football players, among Twitter, because there is finally someone who is in control of a football team that's looking at numbers going, you know what, we should probably go for it on fourth down a little bit more. Like, is he is he aware the groundswell of support that he is already receiving <laughs> from the community? I, I don't really think he cares. <laughs> but he'll take it. I mean, he'll take it. You know, he's not going to turn that away. Uh, you know, he's human too. He feels the motions of the crowd and things like that. But, um, and yeah, you guys I, like it too, right? I'm, I'm sure you like the aggressive there's a love hate relationship. Let's just say that. <laughs> okay. All <laughs> right. All right. Oh, no. You're trying to punt. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not saying Austin Eckler us. wants to punt. Is that what we're taking away from you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not giving you that sound bite. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm saying it's like a, it's a love hate as far as like for offense. I feel like we'd love it um, because it's like, Hey, this guy is trusting us. So we do have the players to get it done. And statistically it's like when you have a short yard of situations, like, okay, yeah, you can probably get this uh, if you have another down. And then it's just when you don't get it, mm -hmm. you start <laughs> to stir up, stir up some guys on the team that aren't the biggest fans of it. Right. And then sure. it's, it's very divided. Um, the, and then the trust the really defense crew, too. right? The trust the defense. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, uh, look, we wish you the very best heading into the new year. Appreciate your time mm -hmm. on the show again today. And, um, I know every fantasy player will be, uh, excited to see what the chargers have in store for this upcoming year. I know we are. And, um, again, thank you for joining us. Wish you the best. Yeah, no doubt. Thanks for having me on boys. I appreciate it. All right, that's going to do it for today's episode of the podcast. Hope you enjoyed the conversation with Awesome Excellent. But uh, we'll be back. Another episode tomorrow. Make sure you check out the community at jointhefoot.com. The draft kit is ultimatedraftkit.com. It's going to be a fun ride in 2022. Thank you for joining us. Talk soon. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.